Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look at the what we call hydrostatic pressure inside stars. What is it that keeps a star from collapsing? Because once the star begins to collapse, essentially gravity will just continue to compress the star into ever, ever smaller volumes. But that doesn't happen. At some point, that stops. So the forces of gravity are counteracted by the internal pressure of the star. And once the star becomes a star and it begins to produce nuclear reactions, nuclear fusion reactions that produce enormous amount of radiation, it's that radiation pressure that essentially then stops, halts the collapse of the star, and then there's a balance between the two forces. So what we're trying to show here is that we'll have a star, and if we take a look inside the star, there'll be a region, a distance small r away from the center, when the radius of the star is equal to capital R. And of course, the mass then within this spherical region that is r or less than r is then called m sub r. It's the mass contained within that inner portion of the star. If we then take a look at the boundary of that, then we kind of expand that. You can see there's a certain area there. The area could be whatever size, and the thickness of that will be a small dr. So we'll just take a very small little layer, and then we can see that the force at the top is going to be the pressure at the top times a, the area, and the force at the bottom is going to be the pressure at the bottom times a. And of course, there's going to be a small change in the pressure, delta p, between that top layer and bottom layer, and so we can say that it's a times p1 minus p2. And that's going to be the change, the, the force, that's keeping that layer from sinking down. Now what's pushing the layer down, that's of course the force of gravity. And the force of gravity can be calculated to be g times the product of the masses divided by the distance squared. Now notice that we have to take the distance at the center from the center to that portion right there, which is small r squared. dm is the mass of the little piece of layer, m sub r is the mass of the star inside that boundary region there. So it's simply Newton's equation of gravity. Now remember that density is mass divided by volume, or mass is equal to density times volume, so we can actually replace the dm, because if we then calculate dm, it's equal to density times dv, and dv, the volume of that, is going to be the area times the thickness dr. So essentially, we can take dm and replace it by density times the area times dr, and now we have an equation that only depends upon r, r being the distance away from the center of the star. So to prevent gravitational collapse, we need to have pressure that is greater than the force of gravity. We will have gravitational collapse if we have a force of gravity greater than the force of the pressure. So until that balance is reached, either the star will expand or the star will contract until those two match one another. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the force of gravity, which we defined over here, and say that it must be greater than the force due to pressure. It's going to be the area times the difference in the pressure between the top and the bottom. How do we get that difference in the pressure? Well, we know that the pressure inside the liquid is rho gh, so in this case it's going to be rho g times delta r. So instead of the change in pressure, we can simply write it as delta, uh, rho g dr. What happened to the a? Well, we had an a on both sides that simply cancels out, and so on the left side we now have g times the mass within that region of the star times the density times dr divided by r squared must be greater than rho g dr. And then again, we realize we have a density, a rho on both sides, that cancels out. And so essentially, also the dr cancels out, and now we realize that for gravitational collapse, we want g times the mass of that region, m sub r, divided by r squared to be greater than the acceleration due to gravity at that point, and the star will continue to collapse. It will continue to do so until the radiation pressure is sufficient to keep that from collapsing. And so delta P then is considered the radiation pressure in this example. So here we have a neat little way of looking at inside the star what is the hydrostatic equilibrium and of course that's reached when these two forces become equal. And that is how it's done.